into thrillers as in the mean streets of contemporary Scotland, where crime and religious extremism meet with violent consequences and language to match. Well, I'll say this for you, Quinlan, your horn's steady enough. Your aim's as straight as your face. I can see not a tremor in that shiny wee lassie's gun of yours. Reckon a dinky wee thing like that would put me down. Course, maybe you've got silver bullets in it. Not that it matters. You'll no shoot anyway, will you? Maybe you should. Might save yourself some sleepless nights or some bad dreams. Oh, say something. Let's have some showdown banter here. Nothing. Inscrutable. Imperturbable. What would happen, I wonder, if I just turned and walked away afore your reinforcements get here? Just turned and showed you my back and walked away? Still nothing. Old poker-faced Quinlan. What's your secret, Detective Inspector? You seem to have one. Even your own men tell me they can't fathom you. But maybe I will. Maybe Ronnie Webster will be the man to ferret out what Quinlan's fear to gee away. Ah, fear. There's fear in the answer somewhere. Fear to whom fear is due. Be thou afraid, for I am with thee. Shroud by Robert Forrest with Kern Falconer as Inspector John Quinlan The Shroud What do you have here, Quinlan? Is a right puzzler of a corpse. Andy Lee. Is that right? Male, Caucasian, mid-fifties, I'd guess. Forty-eight. Not a clean liver, then. An artist. Enough said. And you knew him. Your inspector does get around, Ryan. Everything from painters to junkies in his circle. We was both. A dauber in heroin, eh? All for the good old opium days. Although he'd got clean, so we heard. <laughs> clean is not how I'd describe him now. In a bathroom he is, but bathed he's most certainly not. Beaten, yes. With hands? If so, busy hands. Swelling on both eyebrows, right eyelid torn, swelling below right eye and nose and chin. More than hands were used to do this. Multiple puncture wounds on the scalp, and what could well be up to fifty larger contusions peppered over his chest and shoulders. I haven't moved him yet. The back will be the same. Mm, that's my guess, too. An elliptical stab wound to the right side between fifth and sixth ribs. Other stab wounds smaller to both wrists and both feet. You see what I mean by puzzle? A crucified man? No. A man laid out and made to look as if he's been crucified. And the scalp wounds, the side wound, not just any crucified man. Christ. Exactly. And not just any Christ? I beg your pardon? Naked, hands folded over the genitals, the pattern of the wounds. It's the Christ of the Shroud he's been made to look like. The Shroud of Turin. So he's a copy of a fake? And he used to paint fakes himself. Puzzling her and puzzling her. Who found him? We'll ask Malcolm. Though well, she's still here in the kitchen. She's his girlfriend. Girlfriend? <laughs> Are you telling me artists have girlfriends these days? I thought they were supposed to have mistresses and wives. A couple of wives and several mistresses. I'll speak to her now. Girlfriends? <laughs> By Christ, are these not shoddy times? You found him when you arrived this morning? Yes. When was that? Um, eleven. Just after eleven. I got the quarter two bus in. And you were to him... What? Your relationship? Lovers. But you didn't live together? 
He needed space to think and work. How long had you been his lover? His lover? You put it like that because I'm 20 years younger, didn't you? No. And because he's an artist and I've been his model and all that, well, you're wrong. We were lovers. I wanted the space, too. We'd find a way. How long, Lilius? Two years. Twenty-six months. So you didn't know him before the forgery business? I'd met him, but that was before us. And you did know he was in that business for Webster? Ronald Webster? Did you know that? Yes. And that he was suspected of doing other work for him? Oh, I doubt if Andy ever dealt anything more than hash. And I know he hasn't even used that since me. He dealt heroin, Lilius. And that was never proved. And anyway, I was healing him away from all that and from Webster. Healing? That's a good word for getting someone away from Webster. Like exorcism. Are you a Christian? No. But you're married, in church? Yes. Is she a Christian? Did Andy have any special interest in the Turin Shroud? No. I have. I'm a member of the Tayside Society of Syndonology. It was the shroud that made me a Christian. You believe it's genuine? The shroud of Christ? I don't know if it is or not. That's why I'm in the society, to try and find out. But when I heard the story, how they took the first photograph in 1923, and there it was, in the negative. Only in a photographic negative could you really see it, really see him. As if he'd been waiting for centuries till we were clever enough. Right. The mystery's that deep. And the face. You found Christ in what you admit might be a fake. <sighs> Long story. I met Andy through Alan Dick, another artist, or I thought he was. He is a fake and a bastard. And into the shroud as well. He uses it, debases it. How does he do that? You should talk to him. He does work for Webster. Art, Quinlan. Artifice. Trickery. The artist, first of all, is a kind of trickster, should be. It's what I am. I make artifacts, contrivances, conundrums to amuse and bemuse, make you puzzle and make you smile. Yeah, I don't express myself or try to make society ask serious questions or any of that bullshit. I invent artful cryptograms. That's what you do for Webster? What I did? I haven't worked for him for nearly a year. Not much chance since you put him in prison. So what exactly did you do for him? I made four paintings in the manner of Hockney, after Van Gogh, a pastiche of Picasso and a celebration of Cezanne, all signed with my own name. Did he frighten you? Uh, of course he did. I was working for the scariest man in Scotland. Added piquancy, did it? Listen. If I was a plumber or an interior designer asked into that house, have you been in this house? Yes. Astonishing, isn't it? It's very full. At first I thought, this is the ultimate in crass. He's a monster with no taste at all. So many styles, so much disparity and clutter. And then I saw he meant it. It's a colossal joke. You start to feel all the rooms are grinning at you. A menacing grin? Of course. Piquancy. <laughs> But your fear wasn't of corruption. Oh, for God's sake, Quinlan. Dealing with a monster? He commissioned me to do paintings for him. I did nothing illegal and not even anything deceitful. And like I said, if I'd been a plumber or a decorator, would you be asking all this? And why are you asking? What's it got to do with Andy Lee's murder? He used to work for Webster, too. Yeah. Illegal work. Drugs. Till that spaced-out, holy ass bitch got hold of him. As far as I'm concerned, Andy's been dead since then. As an artist, and as any kind of company, Loopy Lilius took him by the balls and led him away to be careful and serene. He actually used that word. He was after serenity, he said. And the chance to screw somebody 20 years younger, of course. And he wanted to produce work that might have redemptive power. Redemption, for Christ's sake. She got him away from Webster. Right. And from his brains and from his talent. So what are you saying? Webster had him bumped off for getting out of the business. 
I doubt if Andy was that important. Did Webster ever show any interest in the Shroud of Turin as an artifact, a conundrum? Not me, but I did. You did what? Showed interest. I made a copy four years ago. I used methods the original trickster might have used. A real model, coated with oils and unguents, covered with receptive material, warmed up just right. Then open it out and take its picture. Produced a suitably eerie image. Accurate, too. You could almost read the time on his Mickey Mouse wristwatch. Did Lilius bring that up? She's bonkers, Quinlan. You follow her leads, you're well away on the wrong track. You want to see Webster? Yes, sir. I'm surprised you'll ever want to face that one again. His name came up almost immediately. He probably knew it would. I may as well go straight to him. You know he's got together a team of about 17 lawyers. I know. And do you know he takes every opportunity to say how much he's looking forward to seeing you on the outside? Why not send someone else? Someone you can brief on how to question him. Whoever I send might know how to ask the questions, but they won't know how to listen to the answers. It's a his kind of job. He may have had them left on meat hooks or with a bullet in their eye. Even one in the bed of a Tory MP's mistress. Hmm? All right? But the Turin Shroud... As soon as I saw it, I thought of Webster. <laughs> the famous Quinlan intuition. Why don't you use it in me? Since I took over here six months ago, what would you say I took most pride in? The trust you've won in every officer, whatever rank. Right. First time. Even those that are older than me. And it's not something I learned in college or at a management course. It's how I want it to be. I understand that. So, what's missing with you? I trust you, Superintendent. But? No buts. No gulf between us? Or is it between you and everyone? Maybe we could talk about this off-duty, sir. May I visit Webster? We didn't get him on meat hooks or mistress's beds, but you think you can get him on the shroud. Maybe. So you never have to face him again on the outside. So no one does. Why did you no kill me? You'd have saved yourself all day sleepless nights and the shaky bowels and seen my handiwork all over the place. I bet every dubious corpse you lay your eyes on puts you in mind of me. And you would have saved me some lawyer's bills with stump a chancellor. Andy Lee, a painter, an artist and teacher. He was murdered. See what I mean? Some dauber gets a pallet knife across the trapple and I get the blame. He used to work for you. Forgeries. Oh, you're on the sideline. Uplifting for a while, that. Better crack than the open university. But all I did was pass them on. How was I to know the old naff was feeding me phonies? I'm no an educated man. Formally speaking. I've got three lawyers working on that one. We also believe he was dealing drugs for you. Heroin. To his own students, among others. The corrupting be shite. Good riddance, if you ask me. No agree, Quinlan. His woman says he'd put distance between you and him. Got clean. His woman? Would that still be skinny malinky Lilius? No much beef about her, but she was, I have to say, an energetic shag. That arty world she was mixing with had obviously fed her imagination. Of course, that was back when she was modelling and humping for Alan Dick, and I only had her twice. She was too keen on yapping after it. She'd prattle on about New Age and funny lights or Bonnie Bridge, and I would just have to sadly say, up with the knicker's hen and get the buggery. Oh, did she no tell you? By Christ. Bitches, eh? Ah, false witnesses, right enough. She's certainly a witness to your dealings with Lee. What's the other ones your man came away with again? Nay false witness, day nay murder, day nay adultery, and don't steal. 
Well, I suppose you lift less than most coppers, and I have to say I've heard no word of clandestine nuki in all your chronically married days. But murder... Andy uh, Lee. You've come near to that at least. In fact, you came to my place that day with all intent and purpose of killing me. Am I no right? Even had your ain wee personal shooter tucked away in your sweaty pocket. And then, face to face, you couldn't put me away. I did put you away. In here. <laughs> we a rigmarole of minor charges. <laughs> Nuisance value. How long do you think they'll keep me? Same chapter, Quinlan. Who then can be saved? Why all the Bible quotations? Chap, when it shall be opened. Can I have a word, sir? Yes. Outside, I think. Oh, ho, ho. I'll be back, Webster. I'm with you always. Even to the end of all things. What is it? Just mind and phone first. Another one, sir. Another crucifixion. Don't tell me there's another one, Quinlan. Don't tell me you've got something big in your hands. And he's connected. Something hellish big. What you have on your hands, Quinlan, is a most creative twister, if in some ways rather old-fashioned. How creative? Each victim was killed by a different method. One convoluted, one glaringly direct. Both were then mutilated in a most artistic way. You'll want the details ploddingly simple as usual. Yes. <clears throat> Lee here was killed by an injection of the famously old-fashioned alkaloid poison strychnine. But first came the convolutions. He was overpowered by, again, the traditional touch, chloroform. He then received a dose of morphine. This, I assume, was to keep him suitably comatose, but alive while the mutilations were carried out. The uh, stigmata, I suppose we should call them. He used one of Lee's own brushes. He painted the wounds. Well, obviously the wounds themselves are real, but the blood flow from a prone victim would not, of course, follow the directions it would from one nailed upon a cross. So the uh, streaks and rivulets had to be directed by brush strokes. How exact are they? In physiological terms. In comparison with the shroud? Not especially. I doubt if he sat there with a photograph and tried to copy it meticulously. No, I think he had a clear enough idea in his head what the markings were, and produced, well, the style could be described as impressionistic. And the girl? Uh, our uh, gorgeous friend here, much more crude. A massive fix of heroin, so pure it was virulent. She would have died almost instantly. The stigmata, too, you see, are much more primitive. Mm. Maybe he's working his way through artistic styles. He'd established his sign with Lee. No need for the same elaboration after that. Uh, she was an addict, by the way. I uh, know. And an expensive whore. You knew her? Yes. <laughs> my, my, Quinlan. The company you keep. At least I only meet such people when they're safely dead. Inspector? Yes? There's someone upstairs to see you. Who? Miss Malcolm. Lilius? Our dead artist paranoid. Perhaps, Quinlan, she has discovered the crucial clue. And you and she will embark on the deductive adventure together and grow ever closer. And you will solve the case but destroy your marriage. Isn't that how these things go? Syndenology, Mr. Quinlan. You should be looking there, I think. Why is that, Liz? Because of some of the people involved in it. Very weird people. They're obsessed into all sorts of stuff like Knights Templars and secret societies. And you're thinking I'm weird. A Christian hippie chick who's out of her time. You seem balanced enough to me. Martin Wilson. Who's he? He's in the society. But maybe not for long because he's not balanced. He's somehow got orange bigotry and syndenology mixed up in his head. You should meet him. You think he might be involved in Andy's murder? I doubt it. But he is scary. And so are some of his cronies. I think they might do favours for Webster. And he's truly scary. Indeed. I met him yesterday. He spoke about you. In fact, he said you and he had a relationship. A what? A sexual relationship. 
I wouldn't let that... Not even back then. I, w I wouldn't even breathe the same air as him. There's no truth in him. He is a liar and the father of lies. He was a murderer from the beginning. John. Chapter 8. There's been another murder. A woman this time. A woman? A prostitute. And involved with drugs. Both Webster's business. It's him, isn't it? Somehow. Maybe. Can you arrange a meeting with Martin Wilson? I suppose so. If you set it up, we might catch him off guard. He can't stand me. That's all right. But there's someone else I want you to see first, an old friend. Would you like to come with me? Me? Why? Well, maybe you can help me and him see the pattern in this. You're part of it, after all. All right. With me, you may have to breathe Webster's air. It is him. We can talk more on the way. I've always thought his name was right. He signs his stuff with his initial and his surname. Empty crap by E. Dick. He made a copy of The Shroud a few years ago. I know. Felt he was up to something blasphemous and jolly. And he did work for Webster. So did both victims. And he got out? But he was connected. Everybody so far has been. So, if you're sure Webster's behind it all, and he's locked up in Peter Head, and the murders were both in Perth. Why are we going to Blair Gowrie? David Frame's an old friend. When I was at university, he taught me a lot. He's a lecturer? No, he taught me through conversation. The words of the wise are sharp as golds. Well, that one I don't know. Ecclesiastes. Sharp as golds and like nails driven home. I don't think David would consider himself wise. But he does see through things. Fakery and puzzles. You're certainly up against them. I haven't felt the need to talk to him for a while, but this one. Is he older than you? By about 20 years. But he wasn't your actual teacher. <laughs> no. He's a minister. Uh, David won't be long. He has some work to finish. Next week's sermon. Oh, no. He has them written up months in advance. More than enough in hand. He wasn't always so prepared. Sometimes he improvised on the day. He still does that, I'm afraid. <laughs> but I persuaded him to take a week, put together a sheaf of outlines with quotations, at least. <laughs> Leaves more time for his real work. Old Mrs. Anderson could never organise him like that. I don't so much organise as encourage. And his real work? I'll let David tell you about that. It's a kind of synthesis. Theology, sociology and science. Science? Hard science. A book, is it? Well, there might be a book. But other media, too. Maybe it's longer than I thought since I've seen him. Oh, he's changed. But he still speaks often of you. John, John, John. <laughs> How marvellous. David, good to see you. And who's this? Lilius Malcolm, David Frame. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Frame. Lilius is helping me on a case. In plain clothes that are anything but, I see. I'm not the police. <laughs> and I sometimes wonder if John's the police. Still drink on duty, John, if it's the finest malt? Thanks. And uh, how are the real police coping with you these days? Is Maguire still in charge? No, a new boy, Sinclair. I met Maguire not long ago. Still speaks of you with bafflement and disdain. <laughs> Always thought you were keeping something from him. Our secret agent, he called you, because he thought you had one. Mm? A secret, I mean. <laughs> Has Sadie been looking after you? Yes, thanks. Well, I'll leave you to talk now. Right, you are, Sadie. Oh, sit down, John, sit down. Lilius, will you have a nip? No, thanks. Uh, remember, David, you've that connection to make it three. Oh, we'll be booted up in plenty of time. So, what do you think? A far cry from Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> well, Sadie is the housekeeper from heaven. But, Lilius, you're not the police and you're helping John with a case. I'm... A kind of witness, I suppose. Not that light, but sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man. Uh -huh. And I used that verse in my sermon just last week. This Lilius interests me, John, as you always do. Far away. Natter, 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 gossip, 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 and living room and snug bar and manse and maisonette. I know what they're saying. Some Ned gets his head blown off in a betting shop. Webster done it. Some tart with the IQ of 
plankton overdoses up a close. Webster runs the closes. A blade goes into the gizzard of an ecstatic 14-year-old raver. It was Webster that led both parties astray. They're saying I'm downright bloody murderous, but I'm no. What I am is, I'm entrepreneurial. That's what I am. Chock-a-block with that quality, and a touch of the imperial. I manage folk. And if I'm strong and they're weak and need controlling, well, that's your natural selection for you. It's no me that forces them onto drugs or instills in them a craving for some whore to whip their plucky backsides for them. Nor was it my invention that young men want a gang to be in and a gang to hate. But that world's there and you're best staying out of it. Cause you're just no up to my job. So leave it to me and I'll see the cretins know their place and your gardenias don't get ripped up. Keep your distance and rest assured. Grotesque. Utterly grotesque. And fascinating. He's been in test of yours too, John, I remember. What did? The famous fabrication of Turin. Not a serious interest. Unlike that of Lilius here. I'm not convinced it's genuine. Oh, neither was John. But it haunted him nevertheless. Haunted? Oh, and delighted. He took great delight in the efforts of science to explain it away. No matter what new understanding, new techniques and technology were brought to bear on this ancient, scorched and soiled piece of cloth, it seemed to evade them, to baffle them, to keep its mystery. <laughs> and that delighted you, John, didn't it? It intrigued me. Oh, you were positively gleeful. I was young. John believes as a mystery will forever elude science. Canst thou, by searching, find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? And the answer to Zophar's question, I'm now convinced, is yes. And now John's thinking, has my old friend lost his faith? Uh, which is the evidence of things not seen? Sadie says you have sermons outlined for some months ahead. Oh, indeed I have. More than enough. And when I deliver them, it's all I can do to keep my face straight. Or to hold back the truth that'll fuse their pacemakers and melt their Sunday best pearls. <laughs> now, forgive me, John. Mischief. But my faith is transfigured. Science and rationality are the way to God. Is this the new work Sadie was talking about? Indeed it is. But your work first. What can an old, mischievous minister do for you? Lilius is setting up a meeting with one of these syndenology people. I'd like you to be there. You might see something I don't. Ooh, crack the crackpots, eh? And Webster. I want you to visit him with me, too. Visit Webster? Well, what's your new boy Sinclair going to make of that? Or are we not going to tell him? <laughs> Another little secret. Are you a believer yourself, Inspector Quinlan? In the shroud? In the revealed truth of the Gospels. I take it your friend here is. Though these days you can never be sure. Isn't that the truth? Wherefore take unto you the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having your loins got about with truth. <laughs> There's a rarity. A minister able to quote the Bible. And the right age for it, Mr. Wilson. And wear the breastplate of righteousness. Paul, is it not? Yeah. Well, now. There's some kind of sport to quote, quite. You set that piece. You see, the brains are how wet to my eat. Hey, what's that thing? Shut up. Are you into syndenology too, Snake? No. I'm getting into rangers and swally and shagging and videos and making some honest pickles. By looking after Mr. Wilson. Yeah. He's like an uncle to me. I'd see a second feather, except Mr. Watson didn't stole my heat in me a poker. The Malcolm lassie didn't go into much detail about what you wanted to see me about. Could we have some detail now? Andy Lee. He was murdered. I saw I had. I barely knew the man. Not maybe twice. But there was what you might call a shroud element to the way he died. You mean somebody nailed the pair bastard? Jesus, what a man. Snack. He wasn't crucified, but syndenology figures in it somehow. And Lilia said you were something of an expert. Oh, she said that, did she? 
Of course, it may be all no more than a distraction. Ronnie Webster may be more to the point. Webster? You know the name, sir. Right. <laughs> he does not know the name. Inspector Quinlan. Well, yes, Malcolm, has no time for me or the truth I'm after. And yet she fixes up this meeting. And then you turn up with a minister and start talking about heavy men. Well, a wee bit odd, is it no? It's an odd business altogether. Aye. But there's odder than that on the go, and worse. We wrestle against principalities and powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world? Right. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Always lead to Rome. I'll give you some thought, Mr. Quinlan. I'll never get back to you, all right? Good day to you, then. Hey, you with Oasis, by the way. My quote. Come on, you get your ass in gear. Yeah. Who said there were no Kuthi characters left in Scotland? Snack in his Kuthi way has done time off and on since he was 14. Mainly street violence and sexual assault. But Wilson? Nothing for 20 years. Except his known involvement with far right and orange groups. And now Syndonology. And Webster. He's linked to Webster? Nothing direct that we know about. But you saw his unease at the name. And we think Snex done work for some of Webster's cronies. It's all very tenuous. But there are links. A network. A pattern. And we'll find it. Oh my, this is fun. The game's afoot. So, what now? Home? Rachel will have supper for us. Good. It's so long since I've seen the blessed Rachel. Oh, <laughs> she's every bit the cook I remember. The wife from heaven is Rachel. As Sadie's the housekeeper. <laughs> you sensed what she is to me. And of course you're not shocked. Do you know... I don't think I've ever seen you register shock. Well, at least not since your student days, and uh, not much then. Is it that you're imperturbable or inscrutable? I suspect the latter. Well, I'm not shocked about you and Sadie. I'm not even surprised. Oh, you've known me too long. I know that since Mary died, you haven't been... Entirely celibate. Good God, who trust a copper? I'll bet you can even name the houses I frequented. Some of them. But with Sadie, John, it's not some hackneyed farce about a randy reverend and his bidy inn. She's changed me to the core. I'm revitalised and intoxicated and utterly without fear. Transfigured. Oh, just so. <laughs> I'm even on the internet. Sadie's taught me that there is nothing, no tradition, no dogma, no prejudice that cannot be discarded. I'm open and eager and just ripe and ready for the police to ask me to help in a bizarre murder case. <laughs> Why did you ask me? I'm not sure. Because of the religious theme? Maybe. But maybe not. Maybe because of the pattern I'm beginning to see. Because I'm certain Webster's at the heart of the pattern and because I think somehow, for some reason, it's all directed at me. At you? I'm being challenged to fathom this. You personally? Well, what's this, John? Hubris? Paranoia? I don't think so. I'm convinced I'm in the pattern he's making, whatever it is. Whatever it is, you have to admit it's some kind of masterpiece. The ultimate in artistic jiggery-pokery, and I know how it was done. Do you? Certain, sure. Step one, catch your Jew. Has to be the real thing. Do the experts know say the face in the shroud's definitely yid? Of the physical type found among Sephardic Jews and Arabs, according to modern ethnologists. There you go, your reverend pals with me at least, Quinlan. So, you start with the right material, prime yid. Then you flog your Jew, kick it up and down the place and stick a thorny croon in its napper. Hard. Then, nail it up and let it hang for the appropriate time. Shove a spear in its side to test if it's ready. Now, the tricky bit. Finding the right unguents and oils. Correct. Get the ointments right and the wrapping right and the temperature right, you've got yourself ascending. Now, whoever did that has got my admiration. He was what I call an artist. I mean, somebody really suffered for that masterpiece. 
dead sheep and piss holes in the snow. Have not a look at next to this boy. How come your expression never changes? How come you're ranting about the shroud? Oh, poker face Quinlan. We're here because of murders of Andy Lee and Lucy Fleming. What's the shroud got to do with them? Oh, I try and keep up with me and the Reverend Quinlan. Put it this way. Whoever decked the corpses out like the shroud was not in the same league as our anonymous genius that did the original glorious fake. And how did I know that when it wasn't in the papers? Jesus Christ, when am I going to get the appreciation I deserve? Do you still not understand who you're dealing with here? Well, obviously we're dealing with a clever, influential, dangerous villain. Adjectively correct. Are you going to let Reverend Smart as day or you're talking for you, Quinlan? One who hates John for putting him behind bars, and who still has influence outside the bars, who might still be able to arrange a series of grotesque murders. Able? Maybe. Guilty? No. The murders lead John into a labyrinth, a slimy, complex, tightening web. And at the centre of the web, Webster, the weaver. Is that what he thinks? He thinks all this mayhem and slaughter's for his benefit. Let's go now, David. I'll say this for you. Your look's as steady as the inspector's. And if looks could obliterate. Oh, bold padre. You reckon you can see me clear? Oh, yes. Then you know I'm no the killer. Do I? Of course you do. Because he's a head case. And I'm too clever and influential to be mad. He might not be a madman. It might be someone with a deeper purpose we haven't fathomed yet. Is that what Quinlan's been hinting at? And this deeper purpose has to do with him, a wannabe renegade with hunches that slopes away up to Blair Gowrie, is it? Well, his smart new boss is sucking up to five new councillors. Slopes away with a hippie who aside him to drag a cynical old minister well by his cell by date into all this mayhem and slaughter. Now look at me straight. David. Hand on my heart, Reverend. I had nothing to do with the murders. Honest to Christ. You believe me? Do you? Do you believe him? Well, I think wondering whether you believe or disbelieve that monster could uh, lead to insanity. The father of lies. Did you expect me to see something in him that you couldn't? I hoped you might trigger something I would see. Would you have a different tug on one of the threads of his web? Maybe. Hmm. That's one thing I do believe, John. And what's that? Eighteen months ago, when you were face to face with him, an unknown gun in your pocket. An unknown gun? You should have killed him. What the hell is going on? I've been keeping you in touch, sir. After the event. The event being that you've rounded up a lunatic little posse and led them into the middle of a very serious case. I know how serious it is. Do you? Not serious enough to stop you enlisting the help of a model for third-rate artists who's a part-time shroud fanatic and a jovial old eccentric minister. Dear God. David Frame is eccentric, but he has a first-rate brain and he's an old friend who's advised me before. Have you used him to interview villains before? No, but this case is different. Oh, indeed it is. And Lilius knows the world of Sintonology, which is involved in all this somehow. She also used to know Webster, I hear. Yes. So, what's the plot, then? Webster's some kind of Hannibal Lecter character who'll help you shape the profile of our killer. No. This isn't a psychological thriller we're in, John. And Webster isn't a madman who might just drop me a hint about the way through this. He's at the heart of it. He was quoting the Bible to me before the Shroud Connection was ever mentioned. He now knows how the victims were mutilated. He probably knows the Shroud used to be an interest of mine. Did it? And were you at a meeting with counsellors the other day? What? The day before yesterday. Yes. The five new ones. Nothing very formal. Why? I didn't know that. Until Webster told me. What the hell is going on? Did you think among the tombs would be a good place to discuss the shroud, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> 
I've seen Bun here before, sir. Have you, Sergeant? At Webster's mother's funeral. Half the tune was here for that. And you among the inner circle? I'd known the old gene since I was away. As you said, Inspector, we're here to talk about the shroud. And Bun here's an authority, is he? As a matter of fact, he is. Folk change, you know. They get themselves educated, they wise up. So where's the wisdom in meeting in a graveyard? Why seek we the living among the dead? Maybe they're no keen on being seen with us, sir. I quoted John there, Inspector. And it's John that tells us about the spear going into Christ's side and the blood and water coming out. And then he says, He that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true. Burn quoting the Bible. Change man, right enough. Well, all sorts are doing that these days, Ryan. Even Webster. The point is, John harps on like that to say this is important. He's saying pay attention to this. The spear going in, blood coming out. How's it important? What John is telling you. Telling them with a gumption to see it. He's telling us Jesus wasn't he did. He didn't die on the cross, he survived. You remember me talking about the truth revealed in the Gospels? Well, that truth's mere subtle than some would have you think. And there are powers and principalities that would hide that for you. Wilson, has all this anything at all to do with the murders of Andy Lee and Lucy Fleming? I don't know. But we wouldn't be at all surprised. Uh, you'll have heard about the carbon dating of the shroud. Turned out to be no earlier than the 14th century, did it not? And that's the fraud. No, the shroud. What the Vatican would have you believe about it, that's the fraud. You're saying the church faked the carbon test? Right. To discredit their own most holy relic? Right again. I've done the research. I can tell you the books to read, the folk to consult. We don't really have time for that, Bun. This is a double murder we're investigating. Oh, it's all that and there. <laughs> I'll give you the basics. When the bits were cut for the shroud to do the test, a cardinal and an often nervous doctor took them into another room. What for? What was the point of going into a locked room just to put bits of cloth the size of postage stamps into their nine separate fancy wee containers? No point. And it took them half an hour. For half an hour, just they two men, no other witnesses, had the samples to themselves. And switched them. Why? Because if the shroud was proved to be Jesus, he's right enough. Which it is. And it went on to prove he didn't die on the cross. And it does. Then the myth of the resurrected Christ would go out the window. And it's on that myth that all of the centuries of wealth and power and corruption of the Roman church is built. Always lead to Roman spectre. Spiritual wickedness in high places. And who doubts now there's wickedness there? Aye. Aye. Who these days can even look at a priest and no see a child abusing fate? Which I've been saying for 25 years, by the way. Child molesting fakes kept safely on the move by the conniving hypocrites above them, the powers that be. Know your enemy. I'll say this for you, Quinlan. Your horn's steady enough. Your aim's as straight as your face. But you'll no shoot, will you? No, I'm confident you'll know. In fact, I'm feeling as calm as you look. What is it with you and me? I mean, I know you've got it into that law abiding heed of yours that I'm mixed up with all kinds of felonious carries own, but I'm no honest, I'm no. All I do is exercise discipline. I've won it, and I hoard it, and I use it. Discipline. Without me and my hard-earned and hard-used discipline, there'd be mayor out there of all the drunken slaughter and the child molesting and the cretinous neds and the women rippers, a lot mayor of all the scum you should be hating. But you hate me, mayor. I mean, me. Above and beyond the call. Just cause I'm a disciplined man? I could be hurt, you know. John? If I gave a damn... Where are you? What? I said, where are you? Well, my boss thinks I've wandered into a psychological thriller. Wilson seems to think we're in a melodrama about corruption and conspiracy. And what were you thinking? About Webster. About 18 months ago? When you were face to face with him? With... David shouldn't have mentioned that when you were there. Apart from Webster, he's the only one who knows about it. Not even your wife? Rachel, is it? David says she's an amazing woman. I think woman. I have to go back and face him again. Keep prodding at him. You still think he'll give something away? It's one of the ways I work. 
keep looking for the pattern. Then through the pattern. So. Yes, right? So there's. Oh, no. This one, sir. It's very nasty. No puzzle here, Quinlan. Cause of death, hammering about head and shoulders and arms with the famous blunt instrument. Jesus, God. Uh, if you're going to spew, son, take it outside. I'm all right. I can tell you which blunt instrument with some confidence. A crowbar. You're sure? Uh, since there's one in the corner there covered with blood and hair and bits of brain, I'm fairly sure. So, I think it... Oh, we're outside, Ryan. I'm sorry, sir. Such sights and smells give the boy bad dreams. He'll be all right when he's thrown up. This attack, Quinlan, has been what your uh, cliché-loving spokesman invariably referred to as frenzied. That's not red flag wood chip on the walls. Uh, the victim is male, Caucasian, around 70 years old, I'd say. Mardi Connors. You knew this one as well? Yes. And do you recognise him like this? I knew he lived here. Oh, right. Well, if we return to our consideration of our perpetrator's doings in artistic terms, this effort might be seen as a first draft, for two reasons. One, the posing of the corpse to resemble the shroud is rudimentary. Not naked, only trousers removed and the hands placed over the genitals. Mm. Still has his underpants on, but then uh, I wouldn't much fancy touching them myself. No evidence of the puncture marks on scalp, but they'd hardly have been noticed on what little is left of the cranium. No side wound either. And uh, my second reason for suspecting that this is an early botched work is that old Murdy here has been dead for about a month. The first one? Unless there's utter juvenilia in a bottom drawer somewhere, yes. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I could hold it. Don't worry about it. I haven't seen too many worse myself. It was more the smell. There always was a stink about him. Monty Connors, our neighbor said. Bit of a recluse. No family she knows about. I know who he is. I put him away twice, when I wasn't much older than you. Child molesting. Boys and girls alike. As young as five. But I couldn't get him put away for long enough. He persisted. He killed a child. Elizabeth McLaren, nine years old, never came home. You know that? He looked me in the eye once. He never looked anyone in the eye. Just that once. He did it. How long ago? Twenty-three years. Not too long for maybe a parent. Who then moves on to a painter and a prostitute. Who was the neighbor? The nearest one, sir. The lodge house a mile down the glen. Mrs. Crichton. Not that you'd know it. Not that you'd know it from a glance at the man. Oh, my. Oh, my. The fear of the Lord was in that one. I've seen him myself. Came upon him when I was picking the brambles. Down on his hands and knees with his very brow to the moss. Aye. Oh, heart vexed I felt for him. Though I know there's not many I could find pity for him. Most didn't find him easy to look at. Something half slicky, half fierce in his gait and his face. He was disliked in the glen? Mistrusted. Aye, there was sair mistrust of old Murdy. But I saw him and heard him that day out for the brambles. His hands were on the back of his head as if he'd push it into the ground. And the sounds of him, oh my, fear of the Lord and remorse without a doubt. Remorse that seemed to bite at his liver. Was he sober, do you think? Maybe in pain? Oh, it was remorse, sir. I know that sound. And although he, he took the hardest of drink and could argue with trees and such like, I, I, I myself somehow never was in fear of him. I, I felt his own fear and his own remorse were... Stronger than any menace in him. There are no houses further up than his. No. After that, there's just hill and barn all the way across the loch and agar. And not many went up there. Oh, in the season, there's walkers. Oh, all pleasant enough bars, certain southern English. And the Germans, of course. 
and there's a few decent trout burns up that way. But no one went up to visit her? No, not a soul as I know of. And they'd have to pass you to get there? They would, and I've seen none in a dozen years go up with that intention. Except the doctor. Although I went myself the two times when Mardy first arrived here, but he made it fiercely clear he wanted nothing neighbourly. So I left him to himself apart from in my prayers. And now I pray the Lord's own hands caressing away that wailing remorse I heard. Do you know why there were visits from the doctor? Not visits, sir. Just the one. When? Some few weeks ago. Waved as he went by since I was out in front of the strawberries. Up for a good while he was, because I mind I was inside listening to Robbie Shepherd. Uh, I try to catch Robbie whenever he's on. There's nothing ungodly about a good tune. I wish you'd wait just a few hours, David. I could give you a lift home. Oh, no, 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 no. Public transport's fine for me. And I mustn't use any more of your time. I'm only sorry I can't stay longer on the sleuthing trail with you. Transfigured faith to see to. Oh, indeed, indeed. But I'll make the time to speak to you again. Not that I've been much help so far. Yes, you have. By remixing the pattern for you. So you might see it afresh. So you might see through it. Quinlan's intuition. <laughs> I use all the formal procedures too. Oh, Zen and the art of formal procedure. Like 23 years ago, when you assisted at the interview with Murdy Connors, and you knew he'd murdered that girl. Nobody, no forensic, but you knew. Yes. When he looked you in the eye. I have a confession to make, John. I believe you. Believe me? Believe your intuition. That one and only time. Even though you insisted it was more than suspicion, more than normal copper's instinct. Even though you said it was sure and certain knowledge, you were right. And that offended the empiricist in you. Oh, it did. But now, tell me, are you glad he's been butchered? I'd rather he'd been in prison for the past 23 years. And what's the connection between Bundy Connors and the other victims? Isn't that what you have to find? You still think he's Webster? He's behind it somewhere. How can he not be? Somewhere. This is really starting to get in my tits, Quinlan. Murdy Connor. Never heard of him. A child molester. A child killer. Well, like I've told you before, if I was out and about, there would be less of them. There's one less now. Did our boy get him? It looks like it. Good for our boy. Our boy? I mean, yours and mine, since you seem intent on dragging me into your hunt for him. Andy Lee. Lucy Fleming. Muddy Connors. You're keeping score. Admirable. The first two you knew. But the third one, no. So your theory is up the ipso facto shoot. It's as off the rails as Martin Wilson. You know Wilson? Never met him. But I know he thinks the shroud puts the tin lid on the Reformation or some such shite. And I know you've been talking to him. How do you know that? Oh, Christ in a bike, Quinlan. Do you think I'm going to let you bring your boot out there in my territory and no keep an eye on you? Know that I'm having you followed by hoodlums with telescopes and walkie-talkies. How then? Oh, dearie me. Listen, I've got big pockets. The biggest. Room for all sorts. And in they pockets are special friends. And they've got pockets and all. You with me? Pockets. Inside pockets. Inside pockets. And in one cosy wee pooch, what's his name? New boy, university type, golfer, makes his own chardonnay, a tongue well fitted to councillor's arses. Superintendent Sinclair. Think I'm a liar? I know you are. So what are you here for? To see through me? Or to dare me to see through you? That it? Well, I think I should warn you, Quinlan. That is as near as damn it accomplished. 
He knows every step we take, sir. Every interview and every lead. And that surprises you? Not entirely. His influence has always been impressive. And that was one of the reasons we were able to put him away. But not reason enough to keep him there. You sent the minister home? He went home. He has work to attend to. So, if it weren't for parish duty, he'd still be on unofficial police duty. Was he any help? Nothing definite yet. And the girl? I'd still like to keep in touch with her. For more of nothing definite. You use the word lead. Are there any? Apart from your obsessive conviction that Webster's involved. There's definite connection between him and both Lee and the Flamingo. But not Connors. Not that we know of yet, but he does have extreme contempt for the likes of Connors. Don't we all? We don't all have them done away with. I think Webster's done that in the past. John, I've been having a look at the case with our computer facility. You do know we have such a thing. Of course. I'd recommend it to you. State of the art. I know that. Ryan's very proficient with it. It keeps me up to date. Right. Well, I've looked at the histories of all three victims. Scanned and combed and double scanned. We can find only one real connection. Only one name common to all three. And it's not Webster. What is it? Quinlan. The only definite link our state-of-the-art facility can come up with is you. You. He says you're the link. Well, he's not suggesting that you're, you know. I know that. What is he suggesting, then? What's our boss suggesting, Ryan? That it's some kind of revenge thing. That's probably what he thinks. Revenge? How? Every victim so far has either been convicted or investigated by me. And the plan is to implicate you in some way? That's crazy. I think it's fair to assume the killer's more than a wee bit crazy. Sinclair seems to put as much trust in the computers as you do, Ryan. It was me that did the search, sir. I guessed it might be. It was my idea, I mean. Good. That's your job. I was going to tell you first, and then the boss just appeared in the scene and... Asked you what you'd found. Yes. I could not tell him. Of course not. I knew what you'd find anyway. You knew? How? Right. We're here. Lilius, you wait in the car. Glad to. We'll lock you in. If any Apaches gather round, just honk the horn. It'll only be a few minutes. If he's in. If he's in? He's not expecting you. He may at least have phoned first. I'm a busy man. Come on, come on. We were passing. I thought we'd chance it. Got you, bastard. Chance what? Come on, show yourself. Another chance. Die! I'm very impressed, Mr. Wilson. This place is like an art gallery and a computer lab. And outside's the badlands. Right. I'm a hard-working, clever man with good taste. Good awareness of security, too, judging by your front door. But nay awareness of you two murders. Three. Master your bastard. Three? Three murders. All with a shroud connection. Look at how this one's tooled up. Look, will you shut up? He's like a one-man heat case regiment. Shut up! I can handle him. Three very nasty murders, Mr. Wilson, all of which refer to the Shroud. You're the expert on that, you know? First victim, Andy Lee. An artist you admit you'd met more than once. Admitted? I admitted nothing. I met the man. Second victim, Lucy Fleming, a prostitute. And you were a client of hers. That was a question. Well, what is this? Am I a suspect here? What about the third victim? What's your connection with that one? What connection? I know nothing about any of this. Listen. I had a one in the cuddies a year and a half ago. I used it to have a shag at Glorious Lucy. Does that make me connected today? Talking about the horses, Quinlan. You used to have a look at that picture there. Look on me, your stupid game. Level four's no stupid. Third victim, Mr. Wilson, was a child molester. And we know your views in them. But this one wasn't a priest, and he didn't have papish protection. True enough. Bun. So the gang's all here. We were talking about corruption in the Roman church. Talking about an ecclesiastical mafia. About billions of pounds. About global deception, for Christ's sake. No bumping off dirty old men. Eh, hey, and uh, before you ask me how I know, it's in the evening paper. 
Some old tinker by Glen somewhere did time for his poking about years ago. And if I'd got a hood of him, I'd have had the boss off him. There you go. Snake. Freely admit it. Oh. I'm a suspect. I'm a... Snake, shut up in your tail. No, when you tell me, Can Paul. you no see the serious business Look, here? Look, the pair of you shut your faces. Just what is the setup here? What setup? You three. Last time we met you, Bun, you were some kind of wised-up expert in syndonology. Just what I am. No petty thief and a thug anymore. I'm a reformed thief, and I never was a thug. And yet Wilson here barks at you as if you were as thick as Snake. Right, hey, that's no very nice to me, I mean. And you, Snake, where do you fit in? Me and all. Reformed right through. No more knife gangs? No more rape? Jan was never rape. She was buckled with acid and coping for it. Reflected in the sentence, as they say. And you wouldn't have touched as much as a stolen car radio for ages? No, I won't. It was all making tea and going the messages for Mr. Wilson now. What kind of messages? Embassy Regal, pot noodles, half a pan of mince. Ordinary messages. Quinlan? Uh-huh. Are you admiring my paintings there? Yes, indeed. No, you're no. I'm not. No. I can see the team what that's going on here. Your boy digs away and you stone back and listen. I've heard how you work. Well, you'll hear nothing worth your bother. Not one of us knows anything about these murders. Nothing. But of course you won't mind coming in for another talk with us. Talk what a boot. You've heard how I work? Just talk. Watch for the connections. I'm no connected. Tomorrow morning, do? That is one weird team. Was Bun there? Why is that Bun and reformed Snake? Last time I met him, he tried to sell me a car radio with knife marks all over it. And when I said I wasn't interested, he offered me a box set of Patsy <laughs> Klein CDs instead. I'm sure they're as reformed as dingoes, sir. But the murders... There was another connection there. They let something slip? No. It was staring at us. From the wall. What's she here for? As you said yesterday yourself, Mr. Wilson, you know how I work. We'll just talk our way around the connections. My only connection with her is that we were both in the Syndonology Society. And you've been thrown out? Rang. I walked out. Because it's a cosy wee club full of airheads like you. We'd be better off watching for UFOs or collecting antique rosary beads because he's having the gumption to see right through to the hard truth. Which is... That the Christian church has known all along it's built on a lie Aye. and now it's entirely corrupt, intent only on holding on to its wealth and power. Ah, you're right, my half. You see nothing. I've seen you do all you can to spread bigotry. Oh, ah, here we go. You recognise and denounce tyranny and you're an orange bigot. Welcome to the new enlightened Scotland. Let's talk about these connections, Mr. Wilson. The hard truth is, three people have been murdered. The image of the shroud was there at every crime scene. And that image is of profound significance to you, and you knew at least two of the victims. But no, the third one. You're going to keep skating your knees in him. Never met him, never heard him, know nothing about him. So how's he connected? Let's start with Andy Lee. I met him twice, maybe three times. He was trailing a hint this one like she was his guide bitch. You introduced him, that is. I didn't exactly introduce them. Andy came to a couple of meetings. Wilson was there. And he was one of the reasons why Andy stopped going. Another being his brain was that pickled with dope he'd trouble making real sentences. He was a painter. <laughs> Brush strokes were his words. <laughs> Lucy Fleming. <laughs> what about her? How often did you meet her? Aye, well. I'm not proud of that. But I'm not ashamed either. Paul says to be carnally minded is death. If you ask me, he's pushing it out hard there. We're born that way. It seems to me we're a choice of three. We can abjure the hell shooting match, celibate all the way. No for me. Or we can get fankled up and all the half arse kidding on and mooching and backbiting and downright torturing tedious deceit that they call a marriage. I was dragged up and spewed out by one of them and then sucked into another one of my own machine bail in hell. Well, there again, I differ for Paul. It's better to burn than to marry. So now I'm for number three. You pour the tatties with a decent whore every now and again. And Lucy was decent. A junkie who dealt the stuff for whips. Ah, well, maybe. But she was clean and otherwise. And gifted. 
But need to be at the price. A price even Snick could afford at times. No, he couldn't. No, even when he's winning the horses. I made up the difference, which I wish I hadn't. Because he talked about nothing else for a fortnight. And why did you do that? A reward? No, exactly. Snack, despite appearances, is a handy fellow to have about. To run errands? Because he's a dangerous cretin. Born out of cretins, mixes with them, and he'll stay one all his days. He's for another world, a snack. The mire, you might call it. Bubbling, heaving, shite and blood that's getting close to having us all. Am I not right? But I like to know what's going on in that world. I like to keep tabs on just how high that bog and tide is getting. But I thought you were the same yourself. So you bought Lucy as a way of buying Snick's loyalty? <laughs> well, loyalty's no a word that fits Snick, but aye. She wasn't for having a bit first, but I slipped in a bonus and guaranteed he'd no get into a frenzy or nothing. I think I understand. Ah. You've got informers and surveillance cameras and a touch of brutality here and there. I've got Snick. Certainly I thought he looked out of place in your flat. I could see why you might bring him along as protection to some places, but there he was, in your immaculate sitting. Ah. You'd never think there was a hib like that in your own scheme, would you? No. And there's Snake at your computer. Ah, I'll let him play games on it. But it's top-notch gear, and Bun knows how to use it right. I paid for it right and all, by the way. He uses it to contact other fanatics like himself. I use it to communicate and to gather information. You even hinted once you'd used it to hack into the battle. Oh, aye, if only. That place is tighter than a shark's arse. But if the net does let me through the back door into places that should be open to us all anyway, where's the crime? So snakes your eyes and ears in the underworld. Buns your computer expert and research assistant. And you all confer in your neat stronghold haven in the middle of the worst estate in Tessa. Huh. Took me years to get that place in the order it's in. Very orderly it is. Yeah. Interesting touches and taste. Which reminds me, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oh, I'm no here for some kind of soiree, Quinlan. Did you come in now? Quinlan, I'm not too happy about being dragged down here and then kept waiting. Good God. The extraterrestrial hippie. What are you in for, Lilius? I'm here because I didn't know you'd be here. Oh, I didn't know I'd be here either. Until that nice young man, Ryan, asked me very nicely if I'd been nice enough to accompany him to the station. What's the story, Quinlan? I wanted you to meet Mr. Wilson. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Can I go now? Mr. Wilson. Don't you recognize Mr. Dick? I do not. Alan Dick? Not mean anything? That's a blow. Fame, eh? So fickle. Oh, are you famous, are you? Actually, I'm a bit of a phenomenon. Mr. Dick's an artist. In a manner of speaking. A painter, among other things. Like sculptor, magician with installations, video director, Desert Island Discs guest. And you have one of his paintings on your wall. Oh, so you're a dick. See, you do recognise him. Quinlan, uh... That painting. I can explain about that. Good. You have a work of mine on your wall, and you've never heard of it. I'll explain, but uh, just to you, Mr. Quinlan. Fine. You can go now, Mr. Dick. Thanks for your time. Detective Sergeant Ryan will drive you home. I can go. Thanks for my time. Nice young Ryan. Uh, uh, Quinlan! It's quite clear you two have never seen each other before. And I do apologise if you've been inconvenienced in any way. Why did you not just ask me if I... Oh, right. One of Quinlan's games. I've been hearing about these games of yours. From friends of Webster? I've been hearing you still keep company with them. I try to keep interesting company, yes. For the piquancy of it. Right. And for the stories and the styles and the warmth and the humour. Oh, some of them are warm and humorous, right enough. They also deal heroin, they rape, they murder, and above all, they betray. Betray? Still in your biblical phase, Lilius. And which is he that betrayeth thee before they dump you in a skip? Lilius is right, be warned. And now you can go. What painting do you have? Uh, it's not got a name that I know of. It's that one where a bunch of women watching two men wrestling in a field. But then, if you half shut your eyes, it looks like a race course. The wrestlers are a kind of twisted horse. One of the women's even got a pair of binoculars hung around her neck. You don't notice them at first. It's a trick. 
It's also a forgery. Forgery? If it's got my name on it, yes. Sounds like a pastiche of Gauguin's vision after the sermon. I've never done one. I will go now, Quinlan. And, uh, Quinlan, I've been hearing other things about you. About what a fathomless fellow you are. Inscrutable. Can't be read. Well, I think I can read a thing or two. You're lost. You're thrashing. And you're really, really, really tired. I won't bother with the lift. Well, that's an artist. No, what you'd imagine, is he? A couple of messages for you, sir. Urgent? Not desperate. Come in and shut the door. Tell me about the painting. It, it was snake we got hold of it. This is, uh... What? Delicate. We all respect the delicacy. Tell me. Well, uh... The painting, you see, I suppose, strictly speaking, looked up for a certain... Belongs to... Webster. Snake stole a painting for Webster. No, 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 really. It never reached Webster. He never saw it, never even knew it was coming. But even at that, I was this much away from ditching the wee maniac, and I kept the thing well out of sight until... until we heard Andy Lee was dead. It was Lee that painted, and Snake stole it from him. Aye. I mean, this was two or three years ago. You can go. Right. On my way. Uh, glad to be a help. And, uh, you'll mind the delicacy bit? Right. Oh, good day to you. Nothing there, sir. What are the messages? The first from your wife. Could you please be at home between two and three this afternoon? There's absolutely nothing wrong, but it's very important. That's all? That's it. Someone at the desk took it. The other's a bit muddy, Connors. Mrs. Crichton said a doctor visited him a few weeks ago. We've checked. There's no record of any visit. Right. I'll see her in the morning. Now I'm going home. Could I go with you? I mean, tomorrow, I mean, to see Mrs. Crichton. If you like. I'll see you later. He's tired. Can you blame him? He thinks all this is about him. And you don't? All the victims wear on his books at some time. Well, what does that mean? What do you make of the way he works? Like setting up the meeting between Wilson and Dick. Watching out for connections. Yeah, sometimes works. And keeping me around. I'm told he was interviewing some pub regulars once. Real spitting and grunting, dedicated barflies. After someone had been stabbed in the place. And then he trailed one of the old winos around with him for three days. The car had to be fumigated after that one. Original? You could say. Is he unhappy? Who can tell? He's married. That rules out happiness, does it? Rare beast, the happy married man. Almost as rare as the happy wife. What's she like? I've never met her. But I'm told she's a bit of an original herself, is Rachel. Rachel? Rachel? Where are you? You know, get anything with some balls here, Quinlan. Where's my wife? Nothing later than the Beatles, and mostly this bow and tie and fiddle shape. Your wife's fine. Well, this is a stag meeting. Nay cows allowed. Where is she? A wee, a wee message, safe and sound. As far as we know. But these streets are murder in this day and age. There's uh, a couple of things to get straight here. Oh, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, I know him. Fat darky that sweats all the time and can't mind the words. Shut up. I'm just trying to keep things light so the man doesn't get too anxious. There's no need for too much anxiety, Quinlan. The boss just arranged for the wife to be out the road for a wee while. Make her scarce like. So we can get the matters I mentioned sorted. Is this about that painting? That's already sorted. You spoke to Webster? He understood my misunderstanding. All forgiven. Well, there might be a wee bit of doing still to come. But nothing I'll know can walk away for. What then? I might have to limp away right enough. 
I've no plans to talk to your boss again about the murders. When you say boss, you mean that nutter Wilson. When you say boss, Quinlan, you should be thinking me. Ta-da! And for our next trick... Right, pay attention. I don't have long. I'm a busy man. I'm in the jail, so I'll need to rattle through this. I am here for three reasons. Oh, I don't. Four reasons. This Satchmo CD's got black and blue on it. Can you borrow it to me for a wee while? Cheers, right. Reason two. I'm here to, uh, what might be the phrase, demonstrate my niftiness. You really have to learn who you're dealing with, whose nerves you're grating at a tedious rate. I'm no saying I'm all powerful, though, someday, but I'm no a kick in the shirt tail off it. With me so far? Are you getting enough exercise and eating sensible, by the way? You're the colour of runny porridge. Anxiety. Reason three for my flying visit. I have to insist, once and for all, categorically, emphatically, in all good faith, and for the last bastard in time, I had nothing to do with the gruesome and unholy killings. Now, if I go to this length to get that through to you, can you no believe me? To believe or disbelieve you? Insanity. Quinlan, don't try and hump yourself up to defiant mode. No profit there. This shroud business is no mine. I swear it on the life of my wife and Wayne's. Or on any other wife you care to mention. Reason four? It is accomplished. Remember? You dared me. And it's done. I know, Quinlan. I know. I've got you fathomed. Right, I'll need to get back for my psychodrama session. I try not to miss them. The stories some of the headbangers come away with are downright Shakespearean. Now, what you'll do, Quinlan, is just sit here quietly with my chums. Listen to you some Mozart, if you like. Ease your anxiety. The music is good, lamentable. I'll put a tape together for you. Some stuff that's a bit A.D. Snake. Huh. Oh, right. Uh, sorry. You will make no attempt to leave or use the phone, or this pair will kick your gears in, even unto death. And with that, no be the second worst thing in the world. When they leave at the appointed time, you'll continue to sit here for a further sonata or two, and then this week on Fab will be by, and will be no more than a bad dream you woke up sweating for, but can I remember? Okay, dokie? Right. Well... Cheerio, bye. Remember, there's a can in the fridge. You got a beer for the boys, Quinlan? Go and see. You got to run with it. You got to take your time. You got to say what you say. Don't let anybody get in your way. Hey, what did he mean, second worst? I didn't speak to the doctor, you see, so I have no way of knowing his name, but, oh, he had the cheeriest, kindest smile I've seen in a while, uh, and the wave of his hand just gave me a lift. Are you sure it was a doctor? Well, who else could it be? Why do you say that? The look of him, the smile, and the wave. Oh, my Roses haven't been so good this year. Must be losing the touch. They look lovely to me. Oh, thank you, lass. Uh, uh, do you garden yourself? No, I'm afraid I live in a town. Would you know him again if you saw him? I am sure I would, with or without the smile. You've got a sweet smile yourself, lass. Thank you. Uh, and is that the fashion now? That kind of gypsy look? I think I'm unfashionable, really. Oh, like me, myself. I buy just what I like, and nobody else seems to wear the same. What about the car he was driving? Oh, I know nothing at all about motors. You've no idea what make it was? It was blue, I think. Uh, uh, but anyway, will it not have been resprayed and the number changed and got rid of? Uh, is that not what they call laundering? Inspector, are you are you are you sure you won't come inside for a cup of tea? No, thank you. I, I could bring it out here, or lemonade maybe. What what about you, lass? I'm fine, thanks. Is your inspector fine? 
I'm sure he is. A lot in his mind. Aye, there, there would be in your line of work these days. And this is a terrible case. Is he sleeping all right? It's an essential blessing, a good night's sleep. He did say something about a bad dream last night. Look back over your day, make plans for tomorrow, but nothing too ambitious. Then humble prayer. That's the way to settle. And Horlicks, I swear by the Horlicks. Anyway, this man who went up to Murdy's, he wasn't a doctor. Was he not? Doesn't seem so. Well, he didn't look like a walker or a fisherman. And where else would he be going? Up there. And he looked like a doctor? He did that. How? Well, oh, not like one of these modern boys, lasses even, for blunt questions and hurry to be off. Traditional? Aye, gentle. Bedside manner? The very thing. And jovial, too, with that wave of his and the smile. Comforting and cheering. So, if he wasn't a doctor, what else might he be? Priest, maybe? Never that. A lawyer, then? Oh, that's worse than a priest. A minister? Could he have been a minister? There's none. No justification. It's in the first book. None. Justification of what? In Eden itself, for the serpent said, ye shall be as gods. And God, a serpent of paradox himself, agreed. Saying, behold, the man has become as one of us. Well done, Lilius. Oh, this is madness. So it is. Not madness, John. That's what you failed to grasp. There was a lot I failed to grasp. John, John. Connections, the whore, the internet, the shroud. David, what's he talking a about? Sadie, as you can hear, knew nothing. Now she'll know. She'll know now what you are. Oh, you think you know me? With the pattern incomplete. I know you like I know Webster. Webster, we'd have taken him too if you hadn't. What? Found you so soon? I've Lilius to thank for that. Oh, is that so? Well, yes, sir. She's been a rather disturbing coincidence from the start. A syndenologist with Andy Lee. And we knew nothing about her. We, David? He means those like him. Those he contacted through the internet. International, is it? Oh, yes. Christian, Jew, Muslim. An international gang. A church beyond all myth and denomination. A gang of would-be gods. And vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Not vengeance. Attribution, John. Cleansing. Those murders. You know something about them? Yes, Sadie. He used the skill you taught him to find his way into police records. My records. Except Lucy, perhaps. Her he already knew. Oh, for God's sake, John. Don't you want Sadie to know you? To become as one of you? Calm down, To know John. you've cleansed the world of a callous whore that dealt heroin for Webster? She was a reptile, John. And under Webster's control. And Lee, too. A schoolteacher who betrayed and poisoned his own students. But andy would got clean. Ah, oh, but think of the damage he'd already done. Yes, look around you, Lilius. Any city, any village. See the merciless young monsters Andy helped to create. And which you won't eradicate. Webster's echo! Oh, you rage! But you're beginning to understand. Stop this now! Understand? We should wait for Ryan and the others. You're beginning to see. Oh, I see it all. The shroud, symbol of delusion, and also of the hard truth behind it. Hard as the sword Jesus said he brought. Symbol of the new, rational, disciplined, cleansing church whose foundation is lost faith. Not lost. Transfigured. And it wouldn't be all small-time drug dealers, would it? No. No. International assassination. When the pattern is complete, and it will be, it will be something to wonder at, to bring proper fear and right thinking. Transfiguration. Yours too, John. Mine? I've led you to this. Well, you're here earlier than I expected, I must admit, but you too might become part of the pattern. Become one of you? It's in your heart, John. We both know it's in your heart. I've always known it. It brought you face to face with Webster once. Yes. It's in your heart, and you could make it real. Yes, I could. Now. No. No, John, please. 
please, Ryan will be here soon. If I kill you now, I am transfigured. I am become one of you. No, John, you mustn't. Because you're right, David, I am beginning to see. David! I see to the heart of it, in Connor's cottage. That child killer. Yes, you looked him in the eye, and it was then you believed me. You knew he killed that child. Yes. And you looked into yours. What did he see there, which he ran from, resisted? Oh, yes, he resisted. Like a weasel darting and coiling. He was an animal. And you you kept after him. How long did it take? How long? I don't know. He kept reviving. Reviving? He, I was sure he was dead. And then he'd revive. So you started again. It could have taken hours. I know it can sometimes. Oh, John, please, for Christ's sake. And you'd be exhausted, sodden with him. The bar would keep slipping from your hands. And the stench of him, that stench, you brought that stench into my house, into my home, damn you. My home. The old smart-assed reverend, eh? And you took him in yourself, your oldest friend. <laughs> Integra's right enough. Integra's as Judas. But was it wise? Wise? Well, he was getting rid of some right abominations for you. Maybe as well just let him get on with it. Get some of the fear off the streets, cause fear's in the answer somewhere, isn't it? So... What's this? The final scene where I'm supposed to say, but there's one thing I don't understand, Inspector. And then you tidy up the loose ends? No. No. I know what you're here for. You're here to see if I really have got you fathomed. If I know what the worst thing is in the world. Well, I have. And a day. It's Rachel. Am I right? I am. You're fool enough of yourself, yourself and the blessed Rachel, to think you love like nobody else. She's precious like nothing else. The unique shag of the universe. Rang. Arrogant and rang. But I know it's what you think. And knowledge is to lose her or have her ravaged maybe ravaged and pummeled and torn by oh I don't know the likes of snake maybe in a weenie's pal left blind and bleeding and her insides and screaming notes maybe even all that first and then just I how no go the hill hog and finish her I wouldn't have put that past some folk for that to happen, or a variation thereof to her, to your Rachel of all people, you proud bastard, would be the very, very worst thing in the world. Oh, very. Say something. Have I got you? I mean... Killing the man that made that happen, with your own hands even, would it make it worth a dare in the first place? No. Cause yous two think yous two are the mythical perfect strangers. So, have I got you to believe me? The sky wouldn't hold all the things I could believe. Oh, I'm up to here with quotations. Just one more. We looked, we loved, and therewith instantly death became terrible to you and me. Now you're talking. Be thou afraid. The first time Rachel and I went out together... We went to an art gallery. Oh, I, of course. It wouldn't be the pictures like normal, imperfect strangers. One of the exhibits was a reproduction of the shroud. You're making this up, aren't you? It was just inside the front door, on the wall facing the door. I remember two details. One was a hand clutching mine. She was wearing a ring that cut into my fingers. The other was the light. The light. Ordinary daylight. 
falling on that face. Are you cracking up? No, I'm not. So what are you saying? You're saying that's when death became terrible. You're saying you believe me? A ring and a hand and a light on a face. What's that mean? A ring and a hand and a light and a face? In The Shroud, Inspector Quinlan was played by Kern Falconer, The Reverend Frame by Sandy Nielsen, and Webster by Russell Hunter. Lilius was played by Cara Kelly, Ryan by Douglas Russell, Wilson by Finley Welsh, Sneck by James Bryce, Bunn by Finley MacLean, by John Ramage, Sadie by Muriel Romanes, and Mrs. Crichton. De La Donna. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The Shroud was written for radio by Robert Forrest and directed in our Edinburgh studios by Patrick Rayner. <laughs>